Hi, Movie Chronicles here. Today, I am going to explain an American psychological thriller movie called Old Boy, which is actually a remake of a South Korean movie. Let's start. The year is 1993, and Joe Doucette is an advertising executive. One night, Joe has a meeting with an important client. When the client leaves to take a phone call, Joe makes the mistake of hitting on the client's girlfriend. The girl rejects him, and the client confronts him. He slaps Joe and leaves. Joe gets absolutely drunk that night and barely walks down the streets. It's also his daughter's three-year-old birthday, but he missed that. So, he buys a toy from a street vendor for her. He then goes to his friend, Chucky's Pub, and asks for more alcohol. But, Chucky gently declines him. As Joe turns to leave, a woman carrying a yellow umbrella appears in front of him. Later, Chucky steps out and finds Joe's toy there, but Joy himself has disappeared. Joe wakes up in a strange apartment. He does not find his clothes anywhere, but does find some white undergarments. The place is very strange. Even the window is not real. There's only a painting on a wall. Joe starts to panic. Later, a small compartment opens up at the bottom of the door, and Joe begs the man to tell him why he's here. But the man is silent and pushes Joe back inside. Joe is given dumplings and alcohol to eat and drink. Nothing else. Over time, he starts getting used to the place, but the food is always only dumplings, and that starts to annoy him a lot. One day, as he watches a girl doing sexy stuff on TV, he starts touching himself. Suddenly, some gas knocks him out and makes him unconscious. Some people enter and take his hair, semen, and put his fingerprints on a crowbar. Later, Joe watches a shocking news report. His wife has been beaten to death, and he is the prime suspect. Their three-year-old daughter, Maya, thankfully survived. Years start to pass. It is 1997 and Clinton is re-elected as president. Joe starts getting crazy due to his confinement. So, he starts seeking company with a mouse and its babies. One day, he wakes up to find the mice missing. When the food arrives, he is horrified to find that they have been cooked. Joe is furious and breaks the mirror. Then, he uses a piece to cut his own wrist. Joe loses con- But then he wakes up sometime later. His hair and beard have been trimmed and his wrist has been patched up. The people who captured him do not want him to die. A crime channel shows that it has now been five years since Joe's wife was brutally murdered. Their daughter, Maya, was adopted by another couple. Maya has now grown up and is an excellent cello player. Joe is happy for her and tearfully claps. He then starts writing her letters, saying that he misses her and he loves her. He hopes that one day she will see him for who he really is. He then starts taking care of himself. He starts exercising and learning to fight. He still gets the same dumplings and alcohol, but now he quickly throws away the alcohol no matter how much he wants it. Outside, the world moves on. The millennium turns and the year 2000 arrives. The Twin Towers are attacked. More time passes and it's the year 2008. There's a new president. Joe has been working on his fighting for a long while now. One day, the TV shows an interview with Maya, who is now all grown up. She has become a successful cello player, and she actually wants to give her father a chance. Joe is happy to hear that. And then, the gas comes. In a grassy countryside, there is a suitcase. And from the suitcase, Joe steps out. His letters to his daughter are still with him, and he has been given some money. He also has a phone with Maya on the wallpaper, and a timer set to 84 hours. Joe is absolutely happy and grabs a handful of grass which he smells. The sun is too bright, but thankfully... He's been given a pair of sunglasses. As he tenderly steps out, he sees a woman holding a yellow umbrella. Joe quickly goes after her, but when he catches up, some football players punch him for harassing a girl. Joe gets into a fight and uses his previous training to beat them all up. Joe continues looking, and he finds a man holding the yellow umbrella. He starts yelling at the man, asking where the woman is. Just then, a woman comes and stops him. Joe quickly calms down. The woman introduces herself as Marie and gives him her number, saying that if Joe ever needs medical assistance, he can call her. Joe then goes to his old friend, Chucky, whom he hasn't seen in 20 years. Chucky believes Joe's story and does not think that he murdered his own wife. He's even kept the toy that Joe once bought for his daughter. Just then, a man calls him on his new phone. The stranger says that Joe made a mistake at some point in his life and asks him to look at every word and deed he's ever done. He wants Joe to find out why he was imprisoned for 20 years. Joe thinks it's the client on whose girlfriend he made a move, but apparently he's already dead. 
he and Chucky look up all the people that could have done this. Joe is amazed by the thing called internet, especially the search function of Google. The next morning, Chucky finds Joe unconscious. He is holding a paper with Marie's number, the woman from earlier. So, he calls it. Marie comes in and patches up Joe. Later, Marie reads the letter which Joe wrote for his daughter, reading all his story. When Joe wakes up, he is furious at her for reading them. Marie is gentle with him and tries to gain his trust. Later, Joe goes to meet his old boss and Marie tags along with him. But, Joe realizes that it's not him who imprisoned him. Next, Marie helps Joe look for the restaurant which supplied his food during his imprisonment. They try various restaurants, but none of them have the taste that Joe was used to. Marie has some work, so she leaves. Later, in one restaurant, Joe recognizes the taste, so he waits. He sees a man taking a large order, so he steals a hammer and a cycle and follows him into a secret building. He then attacks the two men there, instantly killing them. He breaks into the building and attacks the manager. Then, he ties him up and starts cutting up pieces of his neck. The manager, whose name is Cheney, says that he only runs this place, and a client hired him to imprison him. When Cheney says that he does not know the name of the client, Joe puts salt on his neck wounds. Outside, a man sees the people who's been killed, and he brings some more men with him. So, Joe goes outside and fights off the men in one single long take. He manages to beat all of them up with his intense training and leaves. A couple of mysterious men find him like this. So, they take him and drop him off at Chucky's pub. Next, Joe calls Marie who calls a more senior doctor. The doctor fixes him and asks to take Joe to the hospital. But, Marie declines. That night, Joe gets another call from the stranger who imprisoned him. It's a man sitting in the pub. When Joe and Chucky try to attack him, everyone else stops them. The strangers show him a video of Joe's wife being raped and killed. Then, a stranger says that if Joe can answer two questions, he will give him lots of diamonds and then kill himself. The two questions are, 1. What is the real identity of the stranger? And 2. Why did he imprison Joe for 20 years? He then reminds him that he only has 46 hours to answer these questions, else he will kill his daughter Maya. The stranger then gives him Marie's address, and Joe rushes there, but he is ambushed by Cheney's men. Cheney puts him on the table and prepares to torture him, but just then, Cheney gets a phone call from the stranger. There's a bag at the door full of money, and the stranger demands that they leave Joe alone. Cheney happily accepts. After they leave, Marie weeps bitterly, but Joe manages to calm her down. Elsewhere, the stranger and his sexy bodyguard watch them. Just then, Joe gets another call from the man. Marie helps him track the ringtone, which turns out to be the anthem of Evergreen Academy, a boarding school that Joe went to. So, Joe and Marie go to meet the headmistress. While Marie goes in to talk to the headmistress about Joe, Joe sneaks inside and looks at his yearbook. There, he recognizes the stranger as a student named Adrian Price. But Joe did not know him properly. Next, they go to the school, but it has now been sold to some big corporation and the gates have been closed. So, they decide to come back later that night. Until then, they rest at a motel. Joe sends Adrian's picture to Chucky who looks into it. Later, Marie starts to work on his bandages but things get hot and the two of them make wild, wild love. All the while, Adrian watches with excitement. Elsewhere, Chucky sees a news article mentioning Adrian's sister, so he calls Joe to tell him about it, saying that Adrian's sister was a whore, but Joe deletes the messages. Then, he goes to Chucky's pub and kills him for calling his sister a whore. That night, Joe and Marie break into the school. There, they look up the records about Adrian Price and his sister, Amanda Price. Joe starts remembering the past. Apparently, during high school, he used to get drunk and bully Amanda. One night, Joe spied on Amanda making love with none other than her own father. Later, Joe and Marie look up old newspapers where they discover that Amanda's parents and she were killed. The only survivor was Adrian who was badly injured. When they return to their car, they find a parcel waiting for them. It's a human tongue. Chucky's tongue. Marie is absolutely terrified. Later, Joe prepares to go and meet Adrian himself. Marie is worried for him and does not want him to go, but... Joe assures her that he'll be fine and tells her to stay in this room no matter what. On the way, he watches the live broadcast of Maya being held captive with only 50 minutes left to save her. He calls Adrian 
who gives him the directions. Joe reaches Adrian's penthouse where the bodyguard fights him, but he manages to kill her. Then, Adrian gives him the reward diamonds, asking if Joe has the answers to the two questions. Joe gives him his name and admits that he told everyone at school that Amanda made love with a man. In doing so, the whole school started bullying her, calling her a whore. The whole family was tortured by what happened. The father could not bear to see their family name tarnished like this. So, he shot Amanda, the mother, Adrian, and then himself. But, Adrian managed to survive. That was why he was imprisoned. Adrian believes that what he and his sister had with their father was beautiful and eternal. But Joe ruined it all and destroyed everything. Then Adrian takes Joe to see his daughter Maya. On the way, he asks him another question. Why did he let him go at all? Adrian takes Joe to a fake studio of the crime documentary he used to watch while imprisoned. Adrian says that the show was fake and only shown to Joe. Then, Maya is seen playing the cello. But, Adrian calls her Ashley and sends her away. Joe is shocked to hear that the girl he believed to be his daughter is not really his daughter, but an actor. Joe beats up Adrian, but Adrian once again asks why he let him go at all. Then, he plays a series of video records about the real Maya. Adrian took Maya and gave her to another couple who raised her like she was their own daughter. Maya never realized that she was really adopted. Maya is, actually, Marie. Joe is utterly disgusted by this realization as Adrian starts playing the video of their lovemaking. As Joe screams in pure agony, Adrian relishes the feeling. He then calls Marie to tell her the truth, but Joe begs him not to say anything. He does not want Marie to feel the same pain he feels. He begs Adrian to kill him, but Adrian says no. This is why he really let Joe out of the prison, so he could experience the same pain that he felt. Now that he has his revenge, Adrian takes a gun and shoots himself. Joe writes a letter to Marie, saying that he's leaving her and they'll never meet again. He wishes her a good life with a good man. As a parting gift, he gives her the toy he bought for her 20 years ago and the diamonds that Adrian gave her. Joe gives a pouch of diamonds to Cheney and chooses to live in his private prison again. And that is how this messed up movie ends. For more unique and fascinating movies that you may not even have heard about, click on the videos on your screen. Also, do subscribe, like, and comment. Your one act will make a huge difference to us.